So what could a wave look like and which industries are most vulnerable? Joining me now is Steve Odlin, president and CEO of the Conference Board and a CNBC contributor. It's great to have you back. And it's interesting that both you and the Fed president are, are together focused on this issue. What are you guys seeing out there that has you so on edge? Well, you know, if you look at the early part of this recovery, Kelly, it looks a little bit like a V moving from April to May, but inevitably that's going to flatten. So take retail sales, for example, in May. It popped off the bottom at up 18 percent from the prior month. Everybody's declaring victory. But remember, that's still down 6 percent versus a year ago. And those sales are artificially buoyed. You just have to look at what's going on underneath those numbers. 106 million debt payments were missed in May. There's a 130 percent increase in loan delinquency rate. 2.4 million properties are past due. Government transfers to households in that month was running at a $3 trillion rate. And 62 percent of people receiving unemployment are getting money higher than they would working. So and then look at the income tax delay. So people who owe income taxes now have that incremental money. So if you look at personal income without the government transfers, it's down 30 percent. So you can see how this is going to flatten and it affect businesses. So the bankruptcy rate through May is running at 256,000 bankruptcies. Now, there's a lot of small businesses and companies in that, but the major bankruptcy rates are running double a year ago. And with all of this coming through and with layoffs coming behind it, as government assistance wears off, we're really worried about an increase in those bankruptcies. Yeah, an interesting side note on the debt payments missed. A lot of those were actually student loan payments, which is a separate issue, I think, points to another problem that is just con going to continue to hang over not only the economy, but also these individuals who are trying to figure out which payments to make and not pay, uh, make. So let's talk about some of the bankruptcy candidates that you're most focused on, that most obvious bricks and mortar retail, but there's others in here as well. Hotels, restaurants also make sense. Everything travel, but also you're saying auto dealers, smaller home builders, commercial real estate. Talk through some of those and, and why you see risks there. Yeah, I think that the bricks and mortar, you know, retail and, and restaurants are are pretty obvious and all the ho all the travel stuff is pretty obvious. But, you know, when you start seeing the ripple effect through, uh, you know, these sales and what's going to happen, you know, these these smaller auto dealers just are not going to survive. They can't. The big chains obviously can't. Home building is down. You know, the uh, you know, the, you've got some purchasing going on, you know, most notably in the uh, suburban areas. But but that's going to slow down. And, and then you've got. Uh, you know, theaters. It, it, and I, I think that anything where you have out of home gatherings like uh, entertainment uh, and theaters and shopping centers, I, I think people are going to have a behavioral change, even if the government doesn't step in. And I do think the government's going to step in and slow it down again. So all of that then has a ripple effect. These commercial real estate owners and, you know, uh, ultimately REITs and so forth are seeing. Uh, you know, non-payments. And yeah. that's going to be a big problem. And it's going to ripple through the financial sector. And we're not looking at this as a financial crisis. But what happens when you have to mark to market finally on all of these loans and the assets behind it if there's no income flow, you know, from the ripple effect? So you have to look at the, the steps in the chess game. And it, you know, it's worrisome, Kelly.